Welcome back to my second video about maps. In the previous video I showed you the kinds of elements you can add to a map, and you saw how you can add icons and links to maps that reflect the status of your triggers. But let's take a look at a feature that is barely documented but makes maps really informative. In fact you can add live data to icons and links. So let's go. I'm going back to the configuration maps and will show you a little map that I set up. You can see my Zebex server, a network switch, the workstation I'm sitting at right now, and one of my security cameras. And you see my internet connection and a server fry that is located elsewhere. If you remember what we dealt with in the previous video, you know that you can even make links change its look depending on the status of a trigger. So, for example, I could make the line look red and dashed if my internet connection goes down. But let's enhance the map. Let's say that I'm curious and would like to display the CPU load of the Zebex server right on this map. You know that the label of an icon can be customized. So when I click on the Zebex server, I could add a second line reading CPU something. To get the actual data here, we need macros. The documentation has a large table that shows which macros are supported in which context. This column shows the macros we can use in maps. At the very end of this table, you see the macro I will use for this purpose. Host, key, func, param. Let me copy that to the clipboard and go back to the map editor. To be able to use macros, I first have to turn expand macros on. And now I will paste the macro to the label. As host, I need to use the name of the host. Fortunately, I can use another macro here called host host that is automatically replaced by the host name. The next part is the key of an item. So we need to find the machine readable name of that item that measures the CPU load. We find that when we go to configuration hosts and edit the items of the Zepix server. When I search for load, I find the processor load one min average item. So I'm copying the key system CPU load per CPU average one to my clipboard. I'm going back to the map editor and will replace the key by that string. Now the func stands for function. In maps, we can use the minimum, maximum, average or last value of an item. I would like to know the latest value, so I'm using last of zero. I click on apply and apparently I did it right because the label now shows the current CPU load. As I use the host.host .host macro, I can now also copy the string to the hosts Aldi and Fry and see the CPU load on those hosts too. But I cannot only customize the label on hosts, but I can also do that with links. Let me edit the link that stands for the internet connection. I can use 25 megabit so that the link shows how much bandwidth I have available. But we can also use macros here. So let's find the item key for the currently used internet bandwidth. My Zepix server is also my internet gateway, and the internet interface is PPP0. So the item I need is net.if.in PPP0 for the incoming traffic, and the .out for the outgoing traffic. I'm copying them and going back to the map editor. So instead of 25 megabits, I will add a macro. I'm adding the host name Zebex server. The reason I'm not using the host.host .host macro is that a link does not have a host name. Zebex doesn't know which host I mean, so I have to type the name explicitly. And at the end, I add dot last of zero and click on apply. Alright, that seems to work. So I'm just copying and pasting that line so we also see the outgoing traffic. Let's save this map and take a look at it from the monitoring maps view. Now this is still a rather simple example, but it already gives you a lot of information on a single page. So that's it for this video about data and maps. I showed you that you can use macros and labels of icons on a map. And you saw how to find the proper key names and how to use them in macros to display the live data. I hope you enjoyed it. Have fun working on your own maps now.